Right, hi guys, and welcome back to the Crawl Room, and yes, the Bahrain Grand Prix, of course. Now, what can be said other than just giving my thanks to the medical staff, to the marshals, to everyone that had any sort of involvement in the safety of Formula One over the years, for getting and making sure that Roman Grosjean was able to jump out of that big, fiery mess that he was in. Um, unbelievable stuff, really. Uh, so this isn't going to be a standard crawl room. Uh, of course, I've waited until Wednesday to record this, Thursday before this goes out, of course, before you see it all. Um, but it's still not going to be a standard one. It's been amazing to see that Roman Grosjean's got out of the car alive, for one thing. For two, to only have minor injuries in the end after the uh, hospital have given him the once-over and checked him over it for everything. The fact he's only got slight burns is unbelievable. He's been discharged from hospital today on Wednesday, which is incredible, and he doesn't even have to have full bandages on his wrist either now. He's, he's got his fingers are visible. It's mainly around the hand area here that is still burnt uh, to the point where he needs bandages, but his fingers are visible now. and Amazing, isn't it? From what we saw in that incident on Sunday uh, to how he is today is amazing. So, yeah, uh, my heart and thanks and everything go out to all the ma marshals, the medical staff, everyone um, that's been involved in safety. The ones that have even passed of us, of course, Sid Watkins, um, the great Sid Watkins, of course, that was there pushing and developing the, the safety at circuits as well as the likes of Jackie Stewart. And it all comes together in moments like this, doesn't it? So it's time to thank people from the past as well as the present. And overall, it's... It's amazing to see, it really is. And the fact that Grosjean's hoping to be back in the car for Abu Dhabi as well. Unbelievable stuff. So yeah, get well soon, Roman. Keep fighting, you're doing incredibly well, buddy. It's been amazing to see, a massive relief to see as well. And uh, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. So as mentioned, of course, it's not going to be a standard cruel room this weekend because I still don't feel like I can fully get into it as such. I'm still very much... Thoughts with Grosjean and the Haas team, of course, and everyone like that. I, I don't think it... I don't know. I, I don't know in my mind, but I'm, I'm not in the mood for ranting or raving or anything like that. Um, it's just really, let's get the scores over and done with for this weekend. Uh, the points that I've awarded. And uh, we'll move on to the Sakir Grand Prix, of course, this weekend. And uh, we'll return to business as normal then, shall we? Of course, as well, Lewis Hamilton testing positive for coronavirus. So... Get well soon, Lewis. Suffering from mild symptoms at the time of recording. George Russell taking his place. And uh, Jack Aiken taking George Russell's place at Williams. And Pietro Fittipaldi taking the Haas seat in place of Roman Grosjean this weekend as well, of course. So, a lot of changes to come through. So, yes, wishing, of course, a get well soon to Lewis Hamilton as well. It's been a strange week, hasn't it? We've had a lot of news, a lot of things going off, some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully let's just get this week out of the way with now, focus on the race weekend, have a fantastic race there, and then we can just move on, and fingers crossed when it gets to Abu Dhabi, Roman will be back, Hamilton will be back, and we can all just get back to normality, because this has been a crazy, crazy week. So I'm going to run through the scores, of course, uh, as always, 10 for the best race, 0 for the uh, worst race, you can have bonus points and you can have minus points, they're not here this weekend, no pluses, no bonuses, just the standard 0 to 10. Uh, I might go into a brief description about some drivers, uh, but failing that, it is just going to be reading the scores out, and I'll let you judge how you think I felt their race went based on the scores given. So, it was Lewis Hamilton, 10 points, a perfect weekend, the only thing he missed out on was fastest lap, wasn't it, which Max Verstappen got, but nonetheless, a fantastic drive there, dominant, dominant performance, four tenths of the Bottas in qualifying or whatever it was, crazy stuff, so yeah, led every lap, deserves 10 points. Max Verstappen, 10 points as well. Brilliant drive by him. Um, he did pick the fastest lap point up off of uh, Lewis Hamilton. And, uh, yeah, didn't really quite match um, Lewis Hamilton. But, of course, he was really close to Bottas in qualifying. And then in the race, just got ahead of him. That was that. Alex Albon, 7 points. A strong weekend. 7th in qualifying. Uh, a podium in the race gifted to him by Perez's uh, problems, of course, with 3 laps to go. Um... Yeah, the shunting practice was the big one, though. I'm pleased he bounced back from it, and I think he deserves 
some recognition, which is why he's seven points, but overall he was 40 or seconds behind Verstappen before the safety car came out. So, yeah, it, it, it's seven points. I can't really be too much more generous than that. Lando Norris, nine points. The only reason for that is because I'm awarding Carlos Sainz behind him, ten points. After qualifying 15th, no fault of his own, had some kind of uh, failure on the car during his qualifying lap in Q2. Didn't set a lap at all. So Norris was P4, of course. Carlos Sainz in P5. Carlos Sainz deserves the ten points. Lando Norris, fantastic drive, nine points. But your teammate did a better job to get through the field. You did a good job. Science did incredible. Then Pierre Gasly, P6, made a fantastic strategy work, courtesy of the safety car, but again he has to put himself in those places, and a great decision by Alpha Tauri. So it's nine points for Pierre Gasly, well done to him. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, eight points, solid, solid drive there by Daniel, had a few battles with Ocon, uh, didn't look to have the measure of him at the start of the race, and in qualifying looked like he was potentially going to be out-qualified by him. Wasn't it in the end, uh, he out-qualified Ocon. Well, and then he ended up out racing Ocon to the point where Ocon had to get out of the way a couple of times. So, yeah, fair play, Ricardo. Solid drive there, eight points. Valtteri Bottas, zero. Esteban Ocon, seven points. Again, close to your teammate. Thought you were going to beat him. Didn't. Uh, had the team orders not come into play, maybe you could have finished ahead of him, but I understand why they had to issue the team orders because Bottas was coming through the field. So both Renaults could have been overtaken rather than just one when Bottas got ahead. And then picking up the final point, Charles Leclerc in P10. It's also going to be seven points for him. Tough weekend for the uh, Ferraris this weekend, but a solid enough job. Picked up one lucky point in the end because of Perez's failure. Um, without that, it'd have been P11, but a, a struggling circuit. But I'm comparing him to his teammate. He did a lot better job. Danny Kvyat, four points. Uh, pretty harsh, I do feel, but he did put uh, Stroll on his roof. I'm not blaming him at all for the Grosjean incident, of course. Not at all. Uh, but he did put Stroll on his roof. Did he mean so? No. Did he go for a gap? Yes. Was the gap always going to close? Yes. The 10 second time penalty I thought was a little bit harsh. I think it should have been a 5 second time penalty. But I think he used 10 second time penalty as a bit of a example for the rest of the field going forward. Because, let's face it, it was a little bit chaotic on both starts. Not just the Grosjean incident itself and not just Stroll being landing up on his roof. Um, it was just chaotic. There were cars flying off everywhere. So I think they used Kvyat as a bit of an example there to like, just calm it down or you're going to ruin your race. And it sent to work, didn't it? So yeah, four points for Danny Kvyat. A difficult weekend. And look at where Gasly was. So yeah, just four points. George Russell, nine points. Solid drive by George there. Of course, going to be in the Mercedes seat next week. So let's see how he gets on there. But yeah, qualified P14 and finally went forwards. Even without Perez's failure at the end there, it would have been P13, so they still gained on that position. Uh, but one more, P12, probably one of the best drivers he's had this season, so well done, George. And then we come to Sebastian Vettel, just three points, and he did have a spin in the race off-camera. F1 TV picked it up. It was during the end of the Sector 2, just before you get into Sector 3. He had a pirouette there, and that's why he went down the order. So yeah, just three points to Sebastian Vettel for that. Well off the pace of his teammate Charles. After looking like a couple of good strong weekends were coming, you'd have thought he'd have carried it on here, but not to be. Then we come to Nicholas Latifi. Six points. It was an okay race, I guess. Um, the qualifying was poor, but the race itself, he managed to get ahead of both Alfa Romeos, one Haas that finished, and then the kind of cars he has to race around. So to finish ahead of them, fantastic effort. Made up for his lack of qualifying in the race there. So six points. Then we come to Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, the two Alfa Romeos together. They're going to score six points each. Again, it was difficult to judge. The Ferrari engines, of course, are very, very slow. Um, pretty much matched each other in qualifying, and then in the race, they just swapped positions. <laughs> um, Giovinazzi getting the measure of Raikkonen in qualifying, and uh, Raikkonen getting the measure of Giovinazzi in the race. So it was fairly equal, nowhere near the point. Six points each, I think, is fair for the Alfa Romeos. At least they kept it tidy. Kimi Magnussen, just five points for him in the Haas. A very, very difficult weekend for Haas, as I'm sure we're all aware. And uh, that was that, unfortunately, for uh, Magnussen. He, he, he got damage. I think he got some other problems with the car as well. He had to lift off down the straight for cooling. It was just a nightmare, but he got it home. So five points for that. But I couldn't really do anything else, unfortunately. Then we come to Sergio Perez, did everything right, it's 10 points. He was running around in a podium with three laps to go, he was going to get a podium. It was only that the engine, the car ended up catching fire that he had to stop at a Marshall post and that was that. 
and 10 points to him and what he said was true. One more podium for him, one less podium, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is that Grosjean is okay. And I, I, I emulate them words, Perez, very, very wise. Thinking about going into a Formula One race and not having a drive for next season is absolutely crazy, isn't it? Oh, unbelievable. Um, yeah, and he's there doing this. Uh, someone did make an interesting point on my Cruel Room update video, which was uh, Greg, actually, that says that Stroll since Monza scored two points, whereas... Perez had scored 78. He has scored 78. It would have been a whole lot more with 15 points on top, wouldn't it? So, crazy, crazy stuff there. Lance Stroll, it's four points. It's normally a middle row of five, but he was well back in qualifying to where he should have been. Uh, and that's why he got involved in a silly incident there. Ending up on his roof. I'm glad he's okay, of course. Um, but yeah, uh, he, he, he'd done the damage in qualifying. He was in that position thanks to qualifying in the mid-pack. It's a danger zone. And then Roman Grosjean, of course, um, I thought it'd be wrong to give him massive points just because of the incident. Uh, and then I thought it'd be wrong if I didn't score him any. So, like I normally do with any form of retirement, it's five points uh, for his race. And that's the end of that, really. So, yeah, Grosjean was the main news, of course. He's absolutely fine. Uh, but, yeah, it is just five points on the cruel room. Hope to see you in Abu Dhabi, though. Uh, get well soon, Roman. So, there you go, guys. That was the muted cruel room. Get the scores over and done with, and uh, of course I'll let you judge how how you felt the race went for drivers. And uh, as always, feel free to have a chat in the comment section. The results are on the screen right now. Courtesy of Matthew de Souza, as always, he's busy with uni work at the minute. This being delayed, he didn't know if we were going to get the points done, and he did because he's an absolute legend. So yeah, thank you very much to Matthew de Souza for keeping on top of the points. Massively appreciated, buddy. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, all that remains to say is thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support massively with Delay in the series, not just on the update video here, but also on Twitter. Um, and I just want to let you all know, I, I, I didn't do it for that. I felt that I wasn't in a position to be able to do the crawl room as normal, and uh, that's why I didn't do it. So, yeah, you know, I, I massively, massively appreciate your support. And, uh, yeah, the crawl room will be returning back to its normal self after the Sakir Grand Prix. And I look forward to you seeing uh, some rants and moans then, uh, but this weekend really wasn't the one to do it. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thank you so, so much for the support. Take care, and I will see you all next week. Much love.